worked the actual duck. Yeah, I did not expect this. Over 27,000 people showing interest in the core box design. That's insane. Now that I'm launching my first major expansion to the ecosystem, I thought, why not make a second video to explain what it's all about? Let's get into it. I made Corebox to fix my filament management issue. However, storing your filaments in an enclosed chamber also allows you to control the filament's environment. I wanted to add this to Corebox in a smart way. Therefore, with the help of two good friends, I thought myself how to design electronics. In the end, the project ended up bigger than Corebox itself, but I came up with what I call Semi-Smart. A set of PCB electronics that combine a programmable Arduino Nano with the Prusa GPIO hacker board neatly into one PCB. This combination allows you to get smart, flexible and programmable control through the Arduino, while also being able to communicate to and from the printer via the hacker board. This all sounds fun, but let's start with how you actually can keep your filaments dry. To understand this, I first want to talk about something called relative humidity. A term that is often misunderstood, but absolutely crucial when it comes to keeping your spools in top shape. To explain this term, think of air as a cup. If you have 50 milliliters of water in a 100 millimeter cup, it is 50% full. This fullness or saturation is roughly what we can call relative humidity. It simply tells us how close the material or air is being fully saturated with moisture. If we then zoom into a material like PETG or nylon, we can see that they have microscopic structures that naturally wick moisture from their surroundings. This process is called hygroscopic behavior and is driven by the tendency of nature to constant have, find a balance in things. If you want to go deeper into this process, I recommend taking a look at Lost in Text video where he explains it really, really well. So let's for this example say your spool of PETG has the tendency to hold 50 milliliters of moisture, but it is only filled with 10 milliliters. In this example, we can state that our PET G is 20% saturated. The surrounding air, however, can store moisture much more easily. Let's for this example say it has a relatively humidity of 60%. The air in this example is more saturated than the filament, meaning that the filament will wick moisture from the air and become more humid over time until they reach an equilibrium. But how do we actually keep this from happening? The answer is quite simple. We need to make sure that the surrounding air has a lower relative humidity than the filament itself. There are two main ways we can do this. We can essentially increase the moisture capacity of the air by heating it. Because the actual amount of present moisture stays the same, the relative humidity will drop. By keeping the temperature slightly elevated, we can keep that relative humidity down, which ensures our filament won't absorb moisture as quickly. Secondly, we can actually remove the water from air by adding an even more hygroscopic material, like silica gel. This material has a massive tendency to hold water. When placed in the same enclosed area, it will absorb the moisture from the air much more quickly than the filament can, which therefore keeps the relative humidity of the air down and the moisture out of the filament. With SemiSmart we can do both. We heat the air to make it less saturated and we add silica gel to aggressively absorb any moisture that is released or present in the air. This way we make sure that present moisture will not wick into the filament meaning we can keep your filaments dry, consistent and ready for high quality printing. The heating itself works similar to a Bram Elema's heater dry box. A 200 watt heater module kicks in when heating is needed. Then two high quality Sunon fans pull the air through and push it out at an angle, creating a steady circulation inside. To regulate the heating, there are two thermistors and one humidity sensor. On the HMI, which sits in the front of the chamber, 
there's a sensor measuring the general temperature and humidity. A second sensor sits right after the heater fans, measuring the output temperature of the hot air. By comparing these two, the system can smartly control both the heater and the fan separately to reach and stabilize at the targeted temperature. Controlling the system goes through the HMI, which stands for Human Machine Interface. As the name implies, this will be your main point of interaction. You control everything with just three buttons, a plus, a minus and a select. There is a small OLED screen that always displays the current temperature and humidity, as well as the state of the system. When you push a button to adjust the target temperature, it will change the interface to show you the new target, in either Celsius or Fahrenheit. Later on, this OLED can also be programmed to show data from your printer, like the layer number, printer chamber temperature, active spool, etc. Now, this video is in no way sponsored by Prusa or anyone but you. However, I briefly want to talk about the importance of the word community and how it helped me make SemiSmart. The whole project is only possible because the open source licensing and community driven innovation philosophy that Prusa encourages. The fact that the schematics and firmware for the hackerboard are made publicly available shows that they hold great value to others being able to build upon their work, to bring the industry forward together. This is such a huge contrast to some other brands which sometimes don't even allow you to tinker with your own machine. Now, don't get me wrong, competition is great and actually very, very helpful to drive innovation. However, I personally think it is better to innovate from the standpoint of wanting to bring 3D printing forward together rather than wanting to make a quick buck or earn as much money with as little effort as possible. Give that a thought. Moving on, let's talk safety, because heating is quite a serious thing, especially with a 200 watt heater pulling up to 8 amps of power. Therefore, I want to tell you how I've added four layers of protection. Firstly, there is the target temperature cap at 45 degrees. This protects the MMU, PLA spools and core box frame from softening. You can raise it to up to 60 degrees in software, if you have printed your frame, rewinders and MMU out of a high temp material. But this will be at your own risk. The second stage is the heated temperature output cap which ensures that the heater will never exceed a few degrees above the targeted temperature, with a hard limit at 50 degrees. Again, this can be increased via software, but please keep in mind this will be at your own risk. Third in line is a mechanical thermal fuse next to the heater, which physically cuts off the power when it exceeds 60 degrees. This one is non-negotiable and protects the heater, fans, electronics, and the MMU itself from overheating or melting. If all of the above fail, there's a backup fuse on the PCB. It trips if the chamber temperature hits 70 degrees or the current in the system increases 10 amps of power, in case of a short or something else. This is the last line of defense and is only meant to trigger as the last resort when all things go south. Halfway through the project, I discovered I liked the electronic side of things quite a bit. I just could not stop working on it and wanted to put, push the Arduino and GPIO as far as I could. Now the PCB includes many other features as well, like a RGB LED header, three communication lines between the GPIO and Arduino for various functions, a spare header with two GPIO boards, a ground and 5 volt connection, quick disconnect for the MMU itself and the server port, although I'm not going to tell you what I had in mind for that one. Currently, the electronics are designed specifically for the core box. However, the system is open and can be used in any enclosure you can think of, like the original enclosure for the Mark III and Mark IV, community versions or in any other enclosed printer. Then a little something about the bit. I can't expect everyone to crimp their own cables and buy 200 euros worth of PCBs. 
So just like Callbox itself, I worked with Blue Rolls to create a full electronics kit that ended up costing just 85 euros. The kit includes both pre-soldered PCBs for the main unit as well as the HMI, all electronic components like the OLED, power supply, fans, heater and the Arduino, and all cables pre-crimped and cut the exact length you need. You will just need to 3D print a few parts that are available for free on printables, together with the same detailed instructions you know from Corebox. The Arduino code is published as well, together with the schematics and a pinout of the PCB. If you have any programming knowledge, I encourage you to exploit those resources and add any features you now find missing. I am so looking forward to seeing all your remixes and add-ons. Now, I know the electronics kit has already been available for a while. And actually, we had dozens of kits ready for shipment on the 20th of April. However, that same day, I found an issue where some components could fail under certain circumstances. Therefore, I personally asked Plurals to hold all orders. And after a few weeks of trying to fix the issue, we decided to scrap all of the stock we had and update the PCB with new, better components, which fun fact, are now largely the same ones as Prusa uses on their own XBuddy. This was a really expensive mistake on my end, but it does explain the delay that many of you have already encountered. At the time this video goes live, I have finished the final testing of the new PCB. And the new kits are already in express production. We will first ship out all current orders, but if you decide to purchase the kit now, you should receive it relatively quickly. If you have any questions regarding these changes, the functions of the project or questions in general, feel free to reach out on our Discord server, which now has more than 460 people who are always happy to help. Thank you for the overwhelming support and let me know what, what features you would like to see added to Callbox or the Summer Smart PCB. Thank you. Ciao.